as a high school teacher. One of the first questions that I get is, what can I do to improve my grade in this class? Lazy teachers will say, do some extra credit. Evil teachers will say, you can't. Good teachers will say, go watch Pakistani Pepper's Guide on five things you can do immediately to raise your grade in class. I'm Pakistani Pepper, and this is that guide. The number one trick to making sure you immediately boost your grade in high school is be present at least 90% of the time. The majority of students in my classes and most teachers' classes fail because of attendance. As my co-teacher Mr. Hatton says, you cannot pass an empty chair. And that's basically what it happens for teachers. We can actually get into legal trouble if we pass someone who isn't there. So. Let's do some basic math. The average marking period is about six weeks because you get about six marking periods, um, three in each term, and you get two terms per year. So out of those six weeks, let's say on average you have 30 class days. We're not counting for any days off. In that time, you need roughly four to five days of absence. That is what you get. Any more than that, your attendance dips well below 90, and the teacher has a good excuse to not be able to pass you because you haven't been there for a long time. Now, your goal should simply be to aim for 100% attendance, but we get that life is difficult, things come up. Even teachers are absent a lot of times. But again, teachers cannot pass an empty chair. And at the end of the day, if you're there, our boss is really going to look at us and he's going to say, why was this kid here every day and he's still failing? Because schools don't want students to fail either, it also looks bad for them. So at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you secure your place by being there, again, at least 90% of the time. So in each marking period, at least 25 to 26 days out of 30 that you are present. The number two technique to immediately raise your grade in high school. Keep a dated, numbered, organized, and filled notebook. You have the attendance. You're there almost every day. Now, what's the only other reason that a teacher can fail you? You don't do your work. And the thing is, there are not a lot of students who don't do their work. But when the time comes to actually pass, students fail in two key areas. There are those students who did their work, but they were doing it on borrowed loosely from either the teacher or their friends, and they can't find their work. Or the students who have their work, who have a notebook, but it's not organized. So again, they can't show you the notes or anything that they were missing. So again, if you want to pass, you have to make sure that you have a dated, completely filled notebook with numbers. If you have a table of contents in the start, that's great. But again, that's not going to be the deal breaker. The real thing is it has to be organized enough that when the teacher says they gave something and you didn't do it, you need to make sure you can find it. If a teacher gives a handout, staple or tape it in right into the notebook. Again, that way you won't lose it. Binders are a little more difficult because loose leaf falls out and you end up moving it. But if you can manage that, that's also fine. Binders are, in a way, more convenient. But still, a notebook or a binder with a specific section for that subject is essential. If you have that, if you keep it dated, if you keep it filled, you may very well pass without any kind of issue. Step Three, take a picture of everything you hand in. Teachers are human. We lose stuff. And every single student has been in that situation where you handed something in and the teacher ended up losing it. You don't want that. So it takes literally 0.2 seconds. When you're about to hand something in, here's what you do. You take out your cell phone, which is hopefully nicer than this Windows phone. You take a picture, front and back with your name clearly on it, and then you hand it in. That way, for whatever reason, if the teacher loses it and says you didn't do it, you have the work right in your phone. At a time like this, I also recommend that you actually have a teacup so that when the teacher says that you did not do your work, you can say, hmm, yes, I did. So delicious is this tea today. Step four, ask your teacher about your grades in writing. At least once a marking period, 
about two weeks away from the end, be sure to email your teacher about your grade. That's right. I said email, not talk to them in the middle of class when they're teaching a lesson. They're not going to be able to look into their grade book. They're not going to be able to give you a detailed answer. However, if you ask them in an email to actually write about your grade, they can respond in a little more detail. And again, this is your receipt. If you're actually able to have proof that you asked for a chance to make up work to improve your grade again, it's going to be more difficult for the teacher to justify to their boss why they failed this student. It's also, again, receipts for you. And that's what we keep coming back to. Work is just as much an accountability factor for teachers as it is for students. If you can keep your teacher accountable and keep yourself accountable, you should be just fine. So again, email your teacher, and I'm only saying this again, do it at least, at least two weeks before the end of the marking period, no later than that. Because at the end of the day, teachers are human. We have lives outside of school. So if you're asking me two days before the end of the marking period, all you're really saying is I should make up extra credit for you now if you didn't do any work earlier. It shows that you're not that dedicated, and I'm not going to go through that trouble. I also have a lot of things to do on the weekend, so I'm also not going to spend my Friday trying to grade all the work that you just handed in. Step five, ask at least two questions each class. Answering questions is tough. You need to actually know the answer. If you get it wrong, it's embarrassing, it's intimidating, I get it. Asking questions, on the other hand, is a little simpler. Ask about anything, anything at all that can make sense, that can further clarify, that can ask for more details. Whatever it is, just ask a question. If you don't want to ask in front of your classmates, call the teacher over or go to their desk by raising your hand. Again, asking questions shows the teacher that you're engaged. It shows that you're interested. And if you're a teacher like me, you like hearing questions. You like answering questions. It makes lessons less boring if students are actually interested. Therefore, ask questions. That will immediately boost your participation grade. So that's it. These are five very simple things that you can do to boost your grades immediately. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment in the video below and I'll be happy to respond or you can tweet to me directly at Pakistani Pepper. Again, be sure to hit that subscribe button and as always, just remember, sometimes life's best lessons are in the stories we hear least. Have an awesome day, guys. This is Pakistani Pepper telling you, stay peppery.